What's going on YouTube? Gen Dead Commando here. Thanks for stopping by to the channel guys, really do appreciate it. Today we're going to be doing a reaction video to the M224 60mm mortar. Okay, this was recommended to me a few days ago and I'm looking forward to getting amongst it today guys. I hope you enjoy the video. Before we get into it though guys, please smash the like button. It really does help me to grow on YouTube. Every single like helps. And if you do enjoy the channel, you enjoy being here and seeing my videos, then please smash that subscribe button. Again, every subscribe is much appreciated, troops, okay? We have a Discord channel as well now, so if you want to join that and have a bit of chat on to me, or if you don't want to chat on to me, you just want to send a recommendation for a video, then just bang that um, bang it in the Discord, guys. And the original video to this link will be in the description as well. And that's it really troops, let's just get straight into it. I hope you have a wonderful experience on this video. But yeah, mortars when I was in the Royal Marines weren't used um, by everyone. It was a specific group of people who were trained to operate that weapon system. Okay, so I never I never touched it before. So I'm really looking forward to learning a little bit more about its capabilities and I hope you are too. If you do enjoy this on the live premiere, we now have the ability for you guys to support the channel as well via super chat stickers and comments. So if you do feel like uh, um, sending a donation to the channel to help us grow, then I really do appreciate that. If you don't, that's absolutely fine as well. We're not asking anyone um, to do so. But if you do, thank you guys in advance. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Let's just bounce straight into it then, yeah? Episode, we're talking about the M224 60mm mortar. It's a portable tube that ground troops carry into battle and fire at a high rate of angle up to 3,000 meters away right into the laps of the enemy. In this video, we'll learn about the tactics and weapons employed by mortar teams, what makes them different from other ground forces, and where the future of mortar power is going. Hint, it has something to do with computers and robots. Can't wait till they figure out how to strap one on the back of a drone. Nope. I shouldn't have said that, I'm gonna give them ideas. Awesome. In the last few years, major advancements have been made in mortar fire detection, which are game changing for 11 Charlies out there. There's actually a big misconception that all ground forces know how to use mortars. I barely know which end of the tube is the business end. Yeah, same as me as well, guys. Like I said, when I was in the Royal Marines, I, um, I trained in different weapon systems when I was there in terms of the LMG the uh, GPMG, different variants of hand grenades and stuff. But in terms of getting my hands on a mortar, I never touched one. I was never taught anything about it. That was a specialization um, that you had to put a choice in for to get trained. And yeah, I wasn't one of them guys. So I'm looking forward to learn a bit. Regular 11 Bravo infantry usually don't have those skills because it requires additional weeks of training and levels of intelligence that are similar to being able to walk and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> I can say that those are my people. For those of you who don't know, the infantry is segmented into two designations, 11 Bravos and 11 Charlies. The 11 Charlie types are given additional weeks of training on how to operate the three different mortar systems. Okay, so that's not how it works in the Royal Marines. How it would work in the Royal Marines is you've got a unit of men and each unit has, say, four um, companies, four fighting companies of 100 men. And then we'd have like an attachment detachment uh, company and they would um, be trained in mortars. You might have, I don't know, a troop of 30 guys all trained to be mortarmen. And if need be, there's, those could attach to a company as a mortar fire crew or whatever and um, do it that way. But individuals wouldn't be necessarily trained on mortars per se, or at least I wasn't when I was in the Marines. This weapon has had more play in the war in Afghanistan than it has in the war in Iraq. Many moons ago, the infantry was split into even more sections, with the 11 hotels being responsible for heavy anti-tank weapons, and then basically the army came in, decided to patch the game, and consolidate a bunch of those classes down to just the two. If you like mortar teams as much as I do, please remember to hit the like button, it helps promote our content on YouTube. The 60mm mortar was infamously used as one of the main casualty producing weapons by the enemy insurgents in Iraq and Afghanistan. It's one of their preferred methods of attack, specifically because it's easy for them to fire and then quickly pack up and leave. Yeah, that makes perfect sense in terms of how the enemy used it in, um, in various different theatres where the British, the US and um, other forces have fought. 
it's a really easy piece of kit to um, manoeuvre. You can get it on, on the ground, a couple of guys to fire it, and you can you know, inflict a lot of damage with these things. So I, I understand where he's coming from, and I can definitely understand why it was a major tool used in Afghanistan on both sides. Okay. The modern mortar came out of a necessity during World War I. Artillery was fired in more of a straight line. With mortars, they needed the high trajectory to get into the enemy trenches. If you've ever played beer pong, you understand this principle of the lob shot versus the straight shot. What a tone deaf analogy to make. Fortunately for us, the US military created a portable radar technology that actually sees 360 degrees, and it can locate the exact location of incoming mortar fire that's coming at you instantly. But we have more on that later. Okay, so yeah, I didn't know that's how artillery and mortars necessarily worked. I believed that, well, I thought that artillery fired the same, like really high trajectory and stuff, but it seems that it's not. But yeah, mortars have definitely got the place in most modern warfare, guys. It's such an effective bit of kit. So how do the teams work and what are the tactics that they use? Mortar teams traditionally employ 60, 81, and 120 millimeter mortars in teams of three soldiers. They can fire 30 of the 60 millimeter rounds per minute for four minutes and then 20 per minute for sustained rate of fire due to overheating limitations. The mortar element is usually used at the US Army Infantry Company level. A company has about 100 soldiers. 40 of those soldiers are middle children, 60 of them have insane amounts of debt from getting a Ford Mustang instead of riding around in style like I do with my 2002 Toyota Camry. Within the Marine Rifle Company, they have a section with three 60mm mortars in each weapons platoon. Marines and the Army organize their companies differently and their squads differently due to the different nature of their missions, but we could do a separate video breakdown on that in the future if you guys are interested, because that's actually a topic that fascinates me. Yeah, that was pretty hilarious in terms of <laughs> you've got a certain percentage who's uh, middle school and then the rest is basically in vast amounts of debt for buying cars that they can't afford. That definitely happens in the military throughout the whole world, guys. Everyone who passed training, literally one of the first things that we all did was buy a car that we basically couldn't afford. We thought we were millionaires, but yeah, you, you only live once, guys, and when in the military, you feel that you can do anything anyway. So <laughs> yeah, I like that. Back to the mortars. You have a squad leader who controls the fire of the team and is positioned to the right of the mortar facing the barrel. The gunner is on the left side of the mortar in a position where he can manipulate the sight, elevating gear handle, and traverse the assembly wheel. The gunner places firing data on the sight and lays the mortar for deflection and elevation. The ammunition bearer is positioned at the right rear of the mortar where he readies the next round and assists in the placement of the mortar tube. In some cases, I've seen mortar men fire the 60mm unassisted. I feel like that's every high speed 11 Charlie's dream, to just have a tube, some mortars in their backpack and just shoot it on their own. That's freedom right there. 11 Charlie is the section of the infantry that can grasp basic math, making them the intellectuals of the infantry community by default. So when I was in the Royal Marines, I never, again, I never got the chance to fire one of these weapon systems. And to be honest with you, at the time, it never really bothered me either because you saw transfixed on your own job at hand and watching this video and and it, it's kind of making me wish i did get the chance to fire more it looks really really cool all right i don't think it gets any better than that really does it playing around with bombs chucking them down the smarty tubes and letting them go off i think it's it's just big boys with big toys isn't it you know it's their job to lay down close support with indirect fire for ground troops. Their purpose is to suppress the enemy and fix them in place to allow maneuver elements to close in on them. They are effective at breaking up enemy troop concentrations and reduce the mobility of assault forces who are advancing on your position. One of the tactics is to use mortars to force enemy troops into kill zones. The M224A1 can be fired in two modes, either drop fire, meaning that you gravity fire, where you just let go of the round and it automatically fires when it reaches the bottom of the tube, or you can use the trigger firing mechanism. No, that's the Nerf gun. Actually, <laughs> stay on that for a second. That's pretty cool. I guess I have something else I have to buy off Amazon that I can't afford. <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, I wanna, if anyone knows where you can get one of those Nerf gun mortars, please let me know. I want. Oh, man, I want one of those things. They look brilliant. This mortar can be used attached to the base plate or handheld, which you frequently see being done in Afghanistan. The M224 
A1 is 21% lighter in weight than the original version, meaning it has a reduction of nine pounds, while still maintaining the rate of fire and the same performance as the original version. This was the first redesign for the standard 60 millimeter mortar system since 1970. Whoa. Knowing when to use the right round is important. You don't wanna be dropping smoke on positions you meant to be dropping explosives on. Which type of mortar round are you partial to? I took one of those Buzzfeed style quizzes to find out what kind of 60 millimeter mortar round I am. And it turns out that I'm the M722 dud round. That's not even a real type of munition. <laughs> Man, M722 dud round. <laughs> That's funny, guys. I want to do this quiz as well, if it actually exists. I'm going to search for it after this. There's also a new type of round that, that the Marine Corps is testing out last year, which is similar to a flashbang, and they can be used to disorient the enemy on the objective if you're trying to capture somebody and not hurt them. The standard high explosive round now is the M720A1 60 millimeter HE cartridge, which has some new design features such as the PAX-21 insensitive main charge. This has replaced the Composition B charge, which historically has been used in many different types of military explosives like hand grenades. The military is starting to replace that type of explosive in favor of the new insensitive ones. Insensitive means that it won't explode in an unintended way, like being shot with a bullet or exposed to fire. And this helps when you're storing these munitions. This M720A1 60 millimeter mortar has a max effective range of 3,850 meters. Wow, that's a lot further than I actually thought, guys. Like nearly four clicks away. That's really, really effective in terms of being able to clear areas before you move ground troops in or further than that it's it's a, it means that you could be in relative safe distance away before even you know closing in on the enemy so hey that's four kilometers is far man guys that's that's pretty cool i didn't know that you might be wondering what the difference between mortars and artillery is if you ask mortar men and artillery men that question Prepare to see a couple of offended soldiers. They are two completely different worlds, and they use very different tactics to achieve similar effects on target. Artillery fire fires larger rounds on a flatter trajectory and are usually much farther away from the target. They work in larger teams for this reason. They are also less flexible and require a higher level of coordination and clearance to use on the battlefield. Mortar teams are actually portable with their 60 millimeter mortar. The other mortar types are not typically lugged around due to their weight. During the Vietnam War, they tried to fill the role of the mortar with the 40mm grenade fired from the M79, but troops on the ground felt that the 40mm round wasn't enough power, so they continued to deploy 60mm mortar teams. LCMR didn't even know that thing existed, guys. I'm not sure if it's um, a, a regular piece of equipment in the British military. I, I, I couldn't tell you, to be fair, but... The fact that it's used in the uh, US, that's really, that's really good. So it can detect um, potential enemy mortar fire, which means that they can then fire their own um, equipments up into the air to kind of deflect that, which is, didn't even know such thing existed. It's amazing. Counter battery. Okay, mortar detection. New advances in technology have come out because of the need to detect incoming mortar fire. On the small combat outposts in Iraq and Afghanistan, there was a need for portable 360 degree radar detection because one of the leading causes of casualties for the American forces was mortar fire. The LCMR was installed on our small football sized patrol base in Iraq and it would immediately detect the location of incoming rounds and it could send the information immediately to the counter battery fire. There's a variant of the Striker which has a back opened up so it can fire mortars out of the back. The Striker was located on our patrol base and could counter fire immediately. Our larger size fobs are where the CRAMs can locate incoming mortar fire with their radar systems and they can shoot the mortar round in midair by firing a barrage of rounds at it. Yeah, so that, um, that handheld variant there, I think it was a 40 mil, it probably have a similar effect as a, an underslung grenade launcher which is not massively powerful, guys. It's still gonna damage you big time if it hits you, but yeah, it definitely can't replace a mortar in terms of their capability and the fact that you just literally have to carry ammunition and um, it's, it's, you can be quite maneuverable with it as well, can't you? So yeah, I don't ever see the mortar going out of fashion anytime soon, to be honest. 
The technical advances in fire control methods has meant that the responsibility and leadership capabilities of those in charge of mortar teams has become more demanding. The mortar is an extension of an ancient principle of warfare where troops use siege machines to hurl many different types of rocks, bombs, and no joke even beehives over castle walls onto their enemy. Field artillery assets are limited. Many maneuver elements have to deal with having little to no artillery support, so mortars fill the capabilities gap. Mortars are able to reduce the risk of friendly fire. They can literally be fired directly overhead of friendly troops from positions that are close behind forward elements. This has the effect of allowing combat power to be concentrated at the company level. Mortar teams on the ground are already aware of the situation on the ground near the target, whereas artillery have to rely on information that is relayed to them from the forward observers. Check out our video on forward observers if you want to know more. Yes, yeah, so it, it, the, th the main difference what I've seen with the mortars and artillery is its effectiveness. Both are really effective, but it, they both require different components. You need less components to be able to um, utilize the mortar, whereas artillery it's a, it's a real effort to get that involved in the battle space you know there's a lot of people involved it's big heavy equipment there's a you know you're miles away from the target which means that there's probably more error um involved so yeah definitely both have their place but one couldn't work without the other and i don't think either of them will be replaced anytime soon the new mortars are vehicle mounted 60 and 81 millimeter mortar systems, which are GPS integrated. It looks like an automated semi-automatic mortar system, which doesn't require a whole mortar team to fire. It has a rate of fire of 25 rounds per minute and can locate then destroy a target within 10 seconds. Something else to keep you up at night, this computer mortar system is precise to within two meters. Thanks for watching the video. Please remember to like it. It helps promote our videos on YouTube. Right, and we'll just pause it there then, troops. So I really enjoyed that video today, guys. I hope you did too. I feel as if I've learned more from this video than I did when I was actually in the Royal Marines. Um, like I said, unless you specialize within that area, you're not going to know too much about it. Probably the only thing that we did learn um, in terms of if you didn't specialize and what you did learn was how to identify different weapon systems and stuff. So we definitely knew what they were and what the um, potential enemy would be using and stuff to be able to identify these weapon systems. But in terms of getting hands-on, unless you're specialized guys within that area, you probably won't get much hands-on unless it's changed drastically since I left. But um, yeah, it doesn't seem like a bad specialization to be fair. And uh, the mortarmen in the Royal Marines were real good soldiers as well. Real good soldiers, really quite switched on as well. So. They tend to have a, a quite a good breed of soldier going for the mortar trade. Um, but other than that, guys, if you did enjoy this, um, please drop a like. Please subscribe to the channel if you're brand new here, if, if you haven't subscribed already. And join the Discord troops if you so wish to do so. But other than that, I will see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for stopping by. I really do appreciate it.